Hey guys, Vladimir here with Desktop Makes. For today's mini tip, I'm going to show you my approach to designing and 3D printing objects that have zero infill and one single outer wall. This is known as printing in vase mode, and it's the approach I've used in designing and printing objects like these. It's got multiple applications. It's great for not only vases, but lanterns, artistic sculptures, things where you want the inside to be hollow. Maybe you want to put something in there or LEDs to make it glow. Uh, perhaps you need your model to be very light and almost weightless. Uh, it also has a great advantage of printing very fast uh, because there's no infill. So basically what your printer is doing is it's depositing one single layer of filament around the perimeter as it builds your object up. So that if you were to take one end of the filament, on, let's say the top of your vase, and just pull that single layer of filament, it would basically unravel your whole print down to you know the bottom layer and you would just have one long piece of filament. So, okay, let me show you how I would approach such a design. We'll open up Fusion 360 and I'll start by creating a new sketch here. So I'll go to sketch, create sketch, and I'll sketch on the ZX or the blue red plane here. Now I'm just going to make a simple vase here and I want this to, let's say, be 200 millimeters tall. So I'm going to start by just drawing a line here. We'll grab the line tool, start at the origin. I'm just going to go straight up and make this 200 millimeters. Hit enter, let's zoom out a bit here. And I'll draw another line, and this one is going to start at the origin. And here, just go across. I'll make this 50 millimeters, and that's going to be the base. And 50 millimeters, um, but you have to remember that I'm only sketching half of this, and then I'm going to revolve it. So that base is going to be a total of 100. Okay, so I have this vertical line and this horizontal line, and I'm going to grab my spline tool here. We'll go to spline, fit spline points, and I'm just going to draw a basic curve here. This is the beautiful thing about creating vases. You can get very creative while keeping it very simple. So we're just going to start with a point here, and I'm just going to kind of come out, you know, maybe do something like this, and I'll hit that check mark there. Let's line up this last point here to be... Uh, lined up with this point here, so horizontally lined up. So we'll grab our horizontal slash vertical constraint and click on those two points. That's going to move that up. And then I'm simply going to grab my line tool again and then just close that profile right there. Hit that check mark. Oops, I didn't actually close it all the way. So you have to be careful there. Let's zoom in. I'm just going to take that and drag it across. Okay, now I know that that's closed because this is uh, highlighted here. All right, and then I can have the option to tweak these points if I want, but uh, I don't want to spend too much time in this. I just want to show you guys a basic idea. I'm going to stop this sketch, go to Create, down to Revolve, choose this profile here, click on my axes, choose that center axis, and click OK. And there's my vase. All right, so now that I have my vase, so my first attempt in creating something like this and wanting to 3D print it with only one single layer, um, the approach that you may be thinking is to shell this, right? So we would go to modify, down to shell, select that top surface. And in this case, what you may want to do is say, okay, I'm printing with a nozzle that's 0.4 millimeters why? So if I want this to be one layer thick all the way around, I'm just going to set that thickness to my nozzle diameter, which is 0 0.4. And this is what I did originally when trying to make these types of designs. So I'll click OK. And now I have something that's completely hollowed out and it's 0 0.4 millimeters thick. And this seems to make perfect sense, right? Very reasonable approach. Let's actually take a look at a section analysis. So we'll go to inspect down to section analysis. I'll grab my origin here. Let's grab one of these planes through the middle. Click OK. And now we can clearly see uh, our inside there completely hollow uh, and everything should be 0 0.4 millimeters thick. Okay, let's get rid of that. So we've confirmed that. And let's see what happens when we 3D print this. So I'm going to show you two different slicers here. We'll start with Simplify 3D and then we'll move to Cura. 
So I'm gonna go to make 3D print, click on my item, uh, and I have Simplify 3D here under custom, so it's just gonna open it right up. So I'm gonna click okay. Okay, here's my vase that was brought in, and you can see there how it looks. I'm just gonna keep the default settings for now. Go to prepare to print, just to bring up the simulation to show you how it looks. So I can already start seeing some issues. If you look closely here, you can see that we've got some gaps here in the middle. Okay, I'm gonna zoom out and I'm gonna hit play on this simulation. I'm just gonna take this to drag it across. And you can see for some gaps right there. And let's zoom in here, you see some more gaps right there. And let's carry this all the way. And then you see some problems. So here's my point, there's problems all over the place, right? So you can fix this by, let's say, we'll go to exit preview mode, go to our process here. And there's options here where you can tweak. For example, I can mess around under the extruder tab with my nozzle diameter extruder multiplier and try to get that so that it prints without those gaps. Maybe I should have made uh, that shell a little bit thicker than my nozzle diameter. Um, but you know what, that gets a little bit complicated. Um, let's say you then get it just right and then you change your nozzle from let's say a 0.4 to maybe you wanna try a 0.6, then you have to go back and change all your settings. So here's the approach you should take when designing uh, for printing in this mode. We'll go back to Fusion 360 and I'm gonna to go to my timeline. I'm just gonna delete this last feature here, that shell. I'm just gonna select that and hit delete. So now I have a solid body here. We're gonna take this solid body and export it as is. Right, so if I bring in my section analysis here, I can see that that's clearly solid. There's nothing on the inside there. All right, let's go to make 3D print. I'm gonna select the vase, click OK. And back into Simplify 3D, I'm gonna bring up my options here. And for vase mode here, you go into layer, and it's this option right here, single outline corkscrew printing mode, also vase mode. So I'm gonna click on that, and the one thing you want to change is the number of bottom and top layers. So bottom layers, I'm going to keep that at three, but my top layers, I'm going to bring that to zero. Otherwise, it's going to close that top, and I don't want that. So I'm going to click OK. And the rest of the settings don't really matter because uh, your outline here, it's just going to ignore that. You, I have it set as default two shells, but it knows in vase mode it's only going to do one. Um, infill is set, well I've got it to 2% right, right now, but let's say, you know, I'm just gonna set it to like 20% and then I'm gonna click OK. And let's go to prepare to print. Notice it gives me this message saying, using spiral vase mode will override several layer infill support and retraction settings. Are you sure you want to continue? So whatever you had your infill, it's gonna ignore that. I'm gonna say yes. And now let's take a look at that simulation. So uh, if I hit play here, we'll drag this all the way up. Notice it did print the, that layer, that bottom layer. So we should have three layers there and then we're gonna go all the way up and check it out now, there's no gaps. Everything is fine. It knows exactly what to do. It just does one layer all the way around. And you can see the travel mode. I'll just hit play here. Um, check out the travel of that nozzle. It's just gonna go round and round and round. And in this case, uh, it doesn't stop, so you don't get a seam going through your model. So, okay, great approach. And this is great because let's say you then give your design to someone else who has a different nozzle diameter. You don't have to worry about amending your design to fit, you know, to shell it out so it's that exact thickness that they need for their nozzle diameter. You just send them the solid model and tell them to print it in vase mode. Okay, let's look at how to set this up in Cura. So I've opened up Cura and brought my vase in here. And in Cura, you wanna look at your right-hand side here where you'll open it up in recommended settings, but you'll wanna click on custom and then scroll down to the bottom where under special modes, you'll see spiralize outer contour. And what you wanna do is click on that little check uh, box there to uh, activate it. And once we do that, it'll re-slice. And then we can go right here, select layer view, and for that simulation, we can just drag this little slider here up and you see it's doing the same thing. It's just printing that single outer uh, contour there. And so that's how you get vase mode here. 
Now, not every slicer has this feature, but the ones that do have it, you'll find it under probably some special settings there and it'll be listed as vase mode or as some sort of uh, wording that'll say spiralize outer contour. So you can just look for that and it works pretty similar in every slicer. All right, that's the quick tip for this week. I hope you found it valuable. If it's a feature that you weren't familiar yet, go ahead and give it a try. It's a lot of fun to play with. Um, you can try to push the boundaries to see what kind of stuff you can create. And the great thing is that it's fast, right? It prints really quick. You're not wasting a lot of filament. So um, you have a lot of flexibility here to just experiment and have fun with it. All right, guys, uh, check me out every week here. Every Monday, I'm going to post a quick tip. And if you're looking to learn how to design for 3D printing, uh, visit my website at desktopmakes.com where I have a bunch of courses getting you started from uh, beginner to advanced levels in designing for 3D printing. All right, I'll see you next week.